All right. Well, thank you for tuning in. This is the public lecture for my PhD dissertation defense. Uh, the research project was called Participatory Action Research in Rural Sport and Recreation Management. So first off, I have to apologize for everyone who tried to tune in the first time we tried to stream it when I was doing it live. Um, unfortunately, we lost the feed midway, so I'm giving it another go here, and hopefully we'll get through this one without any trouble. So I'd like to start by acknowledging all the people who supported me in this project along the way. So everyone in Powassan and everyone in the academic side, so um, those from Western, um, as well as the various different sources that funded different parts of this project. Without all these different kinds of support, none of this stuff would have been uh, possible. So thank you so much for that. Here's just a, a brief outline of what we'll talk about today. So um, it should take about 25 minutes for this whole talk, um, and hopefully I can get through all of that pretty succinctly. Uh, so first, we'll talk a little bit about the background and the context of the research project. Next, we'll talk about the approach that we use and kind of the, the theoretical stuff that we drew from. Then I'll talk about the data that we collected and the action initiatives that we um, developed with the community, and then just give some conclusions and kind of ways forward from there. So to kind of contextualize this whole project, um, we can talk about the sport and recreation systems as well as the rural context of rural communities in Canada. So when we talk about sport and recreation, there's been this increasing trend of professionalization within their systems. So this means moving from the kind of mom and pop kitchen table organizations towards more professional, sophisticated, and technocratic sports systems. So systems that share resources, um, that align between different sports and in different provinces. And this kind of professionalization process comes with a lot of resources and support that it opens up for different groups, but it also creates challenges um, by, in terms of accessing these resources, um, as well as setting priorities that may not be necessarily effective for um, all different groups that, who need to access these resources. When we think about rural communities, um, these communities are typically experiencing different types of changes. So while we think about rural communities sometimes as being very similar or in kind of homogenous, there's actually very diverse rural community contexts, and many of these contexts are experiencing very rapid change. So in particular, when we think about changing economies, changing transportation, and especially changing technologies, Rural communities are able to access things differently and in different ways than they have ever been before. So one of the uh, common things we talk about here is the internet and the availability of Wi-Fi or high-speed internet rather in rural communities. So while high-speed internet is making things much more accessible in rural communities, there's still communities that don't have that that access, which is further pushing them away from being able to access these resources. So the basic um, underlying concept in this project was the idea of community. So we were studying the community, and there's lots of different ways that we can define community. Often we will hear community referring to a geographical area, so maybe a neighborhood or a municipality, a town or a city. Sometimes we use the word community to identify uh, a unit of identity. So I may belong to an, a community of alumni of a specific school or program. I may belong to a community of crafters in a specific region. And again, to come back to the idea of technology and the internet, this has really changed the way we identify with communities. So there's no longer a need to be face-to-face -face and have a face-to-face real-life interaction to identify with a group or feel like you're part of a community. So you can be part of an online gaming community with a group of people who you don't know, you don't know anything about except for maybe their screen name. So for this project, we chose a 
pretty complex definition of community as that complex definition can kind of include all of these different ways of defining community in different ways. So the definition that we used was that community is a complex web of, of affect-laden relationships shared by groups of people with shared sets of values, norms, meanings, history, and or identities. So not just one-on-one -on -one relationships, but complex overlapping relationships and shared sets of understandings as well. So this complex definition allowed us to talk about community in different ways and interpret the way people talked about community in different ways as well. So all this talk about community, let's talk about the municipality where the project took place. So this project was completed with the Municipality of Powassan Recreation Committee. The Municipality of Powassan is about three hours north of Toronto and about 20 minutes south of North Bay. It's a municipality of approximately 3,400 people with economic histories and forestry being situated on the railway as well as the tributaries of the South River, as well as agriculture and tourism. Recently, now, Powassan functions as what you can call a bedroom or commuter community. So approximately 60% of people from Powassan will commute outside of the municipality to, for work and then come back to the community to, to live and play. It's also important to note that in the early 2000s, in line with um, broader trends in the province of Ontario, the municipality that is now called the municipality of Powassan is a result of amalgamation. So prior to 2001, there was three separate jurisdictions, the town of Powassan, the town of Troke Creek, and the township of South Hemsworth. But in 2001, these were all brought together into one municipality. And this was important as it came up in the sport and recreation sector later on, which I'll talk about in a few minutes. And then finally, Powassan, based on the most recent census data, experienced a 3% population growth since 2011. So while some communities are experiencing decline and net loss of people or out migration, Powassan is doing okay. They're experiencing growth and they're not um, seeing that decline. In terms of the approach, well, you might think of traditional research approaches as one conducted in a lab where a scientist collects data and answers his questions from the data. We took a different approach with this project. So we used an approach where we tried to involve community members in the process along the way. So identifying their issues, deciding how we'll collect information and what we do with this information as well. So what we wanted to do was engage participants in the process in order to understand the systems and understand experiences with sport and recreation, but then also act on those systems and improve the way they work and the way that they serve people. So this participatory action research approach is actually, could be described as many approaches, and there's two important kind of traditions within that. So one is the participatory research tradition and the other is an action research tradition. And I'll come back to these in a few minutes when I discuss some of the action initiatives that we undertook with the community. So broadly, the objectives for this project was to explore the process and significance of sport and recreation in the municipality and discuss some of the strengths and challenge of this participatory action research approach. Also, we were hoping to influence the sport and recreation opportunities that were available, as well as the corresponding management and policy making practices that go behind organizing these sport and recreation opportunities. So this involved an ongoing and evolving partnership with the municipal, municipal recreation committee. So because I had to write the thesis and come up with the dissertation, it also kind of influenced what we needed to take away from this. So here you can see there was two kind of simultaneous processes that were happening. So one was the more formal data collection and the other was the action initiatives within the community. And although I have them here in two separate columns, 
they really supported and worked off of each other. They were intertwined in different ways. So for the formal data collection with different members of the Recreation Committee and the community, it involved identifying focus areas, collecting data through interviews and observations, discussing the results and making some recommendations. And the action initiatives involved accessing resources, develop, developing programs and policies, monitoring and evaluating these developments, and then participating in different management and policy making activities. So near the end of this whole project, we brought it all together and wanted to communicate it back to different members of the community and offer a chance for them to engage with it in kind of a final time and offer some feedback on the preliminary analysis that we had done. So we did this through a community recreation forum. So you see here in the image a uh, picture of the, the infographic that we posted at the forum. The forum was hosted at the local library where this infographic was up and myself as well as the recreation and facilities management manager were present so that we could discuss and talk to people about these results. And then we had a series of questions on an iPad so they could respond um, and kind of prioritize some of the, um, the ideas that we were working with. So on the left hand side, this column is all basic information about recreation in the community. So what is the purpose of the recreation committee? What is included in the recreation um, budget and what isn't included? What are the facilities um, that we have in the community? And then at the bottom is more detailed information about the recreation budget. The top half of the right-hand side uh, presents some kind of big, broad, overarching themes and results from the data that we collected. And then at the bottom, there are some of those priority questions. So offering people the opportunity to prioritize different ways of managing sport and recreation in the community and offer some direction to the Recreation Committee. So now moving forward, I wanna talk about some of this data. So first I'll go through the focus areas that were identified by the Recreation Committee. Then I'll talk a bit about the action initiatives um, that, that we engaged in, in relation to those traditions of participatory action research. And then finally I'll get in a little bit to the reflection aspect and how the process emerged and then I'll conclude with some big take-homes. So at the initial consultation meeting, these three focus areas were identified by members of the Recreation Committee. So first was the implications of sport and recreation in attracting and retaining people to the community. So how is this involved in the flows of people coming to the community, leaving the community? Uh, and what this is what is called, and sometimes called, mobilities. Second was implications of community development. So community development was largely understood as a sense of community or a sense of identity with the community, with people in the community, or with the physical place, so this base of the community. And finally, what were the implications of unstructured outdoor and or land-based activities? So particularly for youth who had the opportunity to engage in recreational activities outside of a structured program because of the physical space in which they lived in the rural community. So the first theme, attracting and retaining people. People discuss this in terms of both temporary visitors to the community as well as newcomers to the municipality who are settling there. So this quote here highlights the importance of this. So, this person said, especially Powassan, where you have the five original families, and if you're not from those families, then good luck. You've got to kind of be like, hey, this is who I am. But the summer day camp program opened a lot of doors. We weren't the single mom with three kids that came to town. We became part of the community. Like, honestly, I don't feel like an outsider anymore. I feel like part of Powassan. So here you see the person highlights how sport and recreation can be both be exclusive, but also offer, offer the opportunity to enter into social networks and create relationships with people in the community. This idea of the original families was something that came up over and over again in, in different forums and contexts. And it's interesting because it's perceived in sometimes as a positive and in other times as a negative. Second theme was the idea of community development. 
So here people talked about a sense of community and a sense of belonging or membership, but also one of the important themes that emerged was the context of being a previously amalgamated community and what that meant for sport and recreation. So just for a bit of context, after amalgamation, there was two arenas, so one in Trout Creek and one in Powassan, as well as three baseball fields and a, kind of a duplication of some of these, which means that there are actually an overabundance of sport and recreation facilities in the small, small community. So with regard to that, this person said, for a while, I think after the amalgamation, there was a lot of waves about people in the community in powerful positions that didn't want the arena to exist. And I don't even know how true that is. I think that might have been half rumor. And I think that really sparked a fire under people's asses a lot to get it, using it, and improve it, and get involved with that. Because if you don't, it's going to go. So here you see how the management of these facilities and what happened in the facilities was an important part of people's identities to the, both the former and current municipality. So what happened with this was we had people come together and really start contributing to the Trout Creek Arena, getting programs going and really making it more of a community hub and making things happen there. So it's a site for what we could call collective action and community development or resiliency. Finally, with regard to unstructured activities, as I said before, it was just the rural space, so having open space and access to nature and outdoor activities um, was something that was expressed as a really important part of the community. So this person said, being closer to the land is one thing that people in Toronto and the metropolitan areas, they lose way too quickly. And that's the biggest problem we have right now in a lot of our societies that people aren't close enough to the land. We've got an excellent area here with, you know, hunting and fishing and all kinds of stuff. Learning to respect what you have rather than just taking everything and not putting back. So this quote is, quote is interesting because um, it both contrasts the ur urban and rural contexts to highlight resources that are available in this rural context. And it also links these discussions about the environment and environmentalism to recreation at the community level. So bringing all this together, what we did with all this data was bring it together and really try to incorporate that into the work we were doing with um, the Recreation Committee. So here I have three, three kind of recommendations that, that we made and worked through with this different work. The first one was to understand the demographics and participation opportunities that do and do not exist in the community. So understanding who is there, what they're doing, and what they aren't doing, and what people have access to. Often it was kind of assumed that um, opportunities were for everyone, or everyone had things to engage in. But then in talking to people, we kind of uncovered some of the ways that that might not necessarily be the most accurate. Second was improving the transparency of management and policy making. So although recreation committee meetings were open, it was rare that other people who were not on the committee would actually attend. Also at the recreation forum, it was interesting that many people had um, opinions or wanted to discuss the recreation budget because they weren't aware of what the budget was, how high it was, and what different things cost in the community. And this is interesting because that's actually public information which is available on the municipal website. However, just making it public doesn't mean that people engage with it or understand it or feel like they've had a say in that process. And then finally, uh, there's importance in being strategic. So throughout the work, there was times when there was missed opportunities or perhaps decisions were made reactively when an issue arises. So there was a need to be more strategic and have more of a long-term plan for the Recreation Committee, setting both short-term and long-term goals. So next I'm gonna move into the action initiatives, which this kind of segues nicely because these 
both informed and came out of these action initiatives that we did. So here you can see the, the cover of the strategic plan, which we actually formalized for the policy making. But I'm going to talk a little bit more broadly about all the different initiatives that we engaged with with the community. So after getting started, we turned these action initiatives the Get Active Powassan program. So the Get Active Powassan program was funded through the Ontario Sport and Recreation Communities Fund. And after accessing that money, we engaged in a variety of different activities um, to improve the sport and recreation opportunities in the municipality and also support the management and policy making of sport and recreation to support these, dip, these new activities. So the large, a large part of the action initiative was the development of a sport and recreation day camp program. This program involved, also involved purchasing a large amount of equipment in order to run the program. So that equipment was made available to loan free of charge to anyone in the municipality. And these action initiatives also involved a variety of cap capacity building activities. So notably, we created several partnerships with different community groups. So for example, there was a group of people who played pickleball quite regularly in the community. With the funding, we purchased pickleball equipment that they were able to use. And then they, in turn, came to the summer program and ran a day of pickleball workshop um, or pickleball skills with the youth who were attending the summer program. These initiatives also involve training for people involved in sport and recreation. So we offered coach training, first aid training um, with that and engaged different people who are already engaged in sport and recreation, both with the program and with these policy systems and some of the resources that they offered. And then to support all of that, we also worked on different policies, so such as a strategic plan, um, an equipment loan policy for the municipality as well. And, and these were just kind of the under, underlying processes that supported these program development. So in reflecting back on these action initiatives and the traditions of participatory action research, it was kind of evident that we shifted between these two traditions in different ways. So participatory research is a bit more rebellious in its nature. So it's about working with people to enact social change or to work against the systems that may not be serving them well. So an example of this, for a while we were using the local school space to run the day camp program. So there's a picture here of the group playing lacrosse in the gym. However, Although the school had a community use policy, we were told that we weren't able to access the school at certain times on school holidays as there wouldn't be people there. And this made it difficult because, as I noted, so many people in the community commute out of the municipality for work. So having to end a day program at 3 p.m. isn't really feasible because people haven't finished their workday yet and aren't able to come back to pick up young people in the program. So in working through this, it seemed pretty contradictory that there was this community use policy, but then that it was only in certain times. Um, so we, and further, people at the board were expressing their desire to work with community groups and engage in community partnerships. So it seemed, seemed a little contradictory. So we worked through the process of drafting a, a formal letter, and, and after several kind of iterations and edits, uh, members of the municipal council went to the board office and spoke with the chairman and eventually we had it changed so that we could use the, the space at the different times. So this demonstrates the way that working within these systems and kind of highlighting these contradictions allowed us to address the issues that we were facing and, and improve that, that system to better serve our needs. Action research on the other hand kind of comes more from the organizational studies. So it's about working with the 
uh, resources that you have within a specific structure or context uh, to create um, changes in the system or, or solve a problem. This was evident in the way we set up the Get Active Powassan program. So um, specifically the way we fostered partnerships with different community groups, access existing resources that were already happening in order to bring it together into this one cohesive program to get young people involved in different sport and recreation activities within the municipality. So finally, I wanna come back a little bit um, to the approach. So um, this approach wasn't traditional in the sense that we didn't identify a question, go ask, collect the data and find the answer. It was much more fluid and emergent in the way that it came about. And a really important part of this process um, was being reflective and, ref and thinking about what we were doing and how we were doing it and what was working well and what wasn't. And this applied to both the data collection processes, so the interviews and observations, as well as the action initiatives and the program development and the evaluation. So by reflecting on who we were connecting with and who we weren't connecting with, um, the answers that we were getting and weren't getting, uh, and what was working well and what wasn't working well, we were able to adapt the process along the way. So adapt the questions we were asking, adapt the timing of the programs, adapt the people who we were reaching out with to be involved. Um, and this was a really, really insightful process to go through and to discuss with different people in the municipality. And it, it really helped us to articulate our roles, um, both as researchers and as well as community developers or program developers in the community. And overall, it just, it really enriched the process and, and allowed for a more, a more kind of holistic picture of what we were accomplishing and what we weren't accomplishing. So, so what? What are the take homes? What can we learn um, from this project and what are the things um, that it might help improve? First, it was evident that sport and recreation were important social activities in the community and that was involved in many social processes. As a result, in order to effectively manage these activities, it required more than just your knowledge of how to manage sport and recreation. So managers or organizers were required to know about the social, cultural, and political context of the community. So who was able to support what, which local people were engaged in which programs, which families contributed to different things. Um, and it created a really interesting practice of managing sport and recreation in the community. So for example, to organize a tournament, it wasn't just about knowing how to create a tournament bracket and put your teams against each other. It was also about knowing which teams were from the community or from the municipality, which teams were coming from somewhere else, which teams would be competitive, which teams had rivalries or histories. And, and this all played into a, a really kind of complex process for something that you might think would be quite simple. Next, these increasingly professionalized sport and recreation systems create challenges and opportunities for rural organizers. So as I noted at the beginning, um, this, these systems open up the resources and allow different groups to access them. So for example, our rural municipal recreation committee. However, in some cases, the community outcomes or the community objectives didn't always align with the values that were articulated in these systems and in these programs. And this is important to consider, um, particularly when these policies are struggling to balance between mass participation objectives and more elite or um, professional development objectives. And finally, the process of community partnership provided the opportunity to engage with pertinent issues and identify other or future issues that we could consider. So the result of this was this fluent emergent process um, and it allowed for a variety and reach research action initiatives to be engaged and to also develop and move further. So it was really important 
that we allowed the process to emerge because I could not have imagined at, at the outset of this project, I never would have imagined that the final document would look the way that it does and that um, the results evolved to be what they were. So this reflexive immersion process was a strength of conducting this type of research with community members. So that brings us to the end. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, feel free to leave comments on the end, on the discussion box. Um, and thanks again. This was a, a great process, and I really appreciate you tuning in uh, to hearing about our work over the last couple of years. <laughs>